An extraordinarily important human characteristic is, of course, our ability to speak, human language. This is a concept we've brought up several times earlier in the semester, but it's important to think about now in the context of Pleistocene human evolution in the fossil record. The fossils themselves, sadly, can only provide us indirect evidence of language production and language abilities. We can look, for example, at the overall size of the brain as an indicator of overall cognitive capabilities. We can look at specific features on the surface of the brain that we know are active during human speech today as a way of trying to infer when these kind of features developed in the course of human evolution. We can also look at the hyoid bone, that bone that floats high in our throat and is actually involved in sound production today. We know, for example, from the hyoid bone preserved at Dakika, the Australopithecus afarensis locality, that Australopithecines appear to have had ape-like sound production abilities. They produce the range of sounds that we see more closely related to chimpanzees or gorillas today than humans. We have a hyoid bone preserved from the Neanderthal side of Shanidar from Iraq that has a much more human-like hyoid bone, suggested that for the fact that Neanderthals would have produced more human-like sounds. Not necessarily capable of human language, but human-like sound production. Now, our best evidence about language production actually comes from the archaeological record, where we can look and get indirect evidence about how humans conceptualize the world around them, how they understood time and space, these sort of fundamental categories that reflect our own understanding, both cognitive and linguistic, of the world around us. We can look, for example, at how these hominid populations use tools across time and space. The ability, for example, to show planning for future events, to have a cognitive concept of the future, to be able to communicate a sense of the future to other individuals in the context of tool production conveys a very complex understanding of the world around us, one that we associate or take for granted with our own ability to speak and conceptualize a future world, a world that hasn't existed, that has many possible different kinds of existence that might go along with it. This is something that we can infer from the archaeological record to some degree. Now, language today as we use it is extraordinarily complex, and yet it didn't emerge all at once as a very complex reality. Language likely developed piecemeal over a long period of time. Different components, different layerings of complexity probably developed over a long period of time. The complexity of language that we have today might be a product of only, say, the last 20 or 30,000 years. And yet, different components of that language would have developed over at least, say, a million years. If we look at the Middle Pleistocene, for example, when we know that we have populations occupying the landscape, time and space, in complex ways, there's probably surely some degree of language that's going on, some degree of incipient proto-human language that already exists. By the time we get to the later Pleistocene, that might increase. As we'll see, once we get into the symbolic revolution that we associate with the end of the Pleistocene, it may be a reflection of the development of full human language capabilities, the development of a language much like we have today. But the evolution of human language likely wasn't something that happened instantaneously. There's no single mutation that gave rise to human language. There's no single uh, development, no single adaptation that created this complex but essential component of our existence today. It likely developed gradually over long periods of time as different components of language became part of the overall human repertoire.